Hello, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, we are continuing with some water-soluble oil paints, just various brands, playing around with different color combinations, applying it in fast and loose style, in the style of the tonalists Stuart Davies and Dennis Sheehan. And here I have a five by seven. I've just been using this um, universal primed linen panel, uh, Centurion brand. For the price and size, it's great. Whenever you start looking to hire bigger sizes, it gets expensive. So it's just really worthwhile for fast and loose and having fun. Anywho, today will be um, the Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine. That's what I'll go with. Pretty dark right off the bat. I'm going to use the white of the uh, canvas. Then eventually, whenever I get the white in, I'm going to play with it with a uh, soft brush. I've watched uh, Stuart Davies where he has applied it, the white in the sky, kind of very liberally and then used a very soft haired brush to make it wispy. So I'm curious how that'll be with, um, with water soluble oils. And I'm not sure if it'd be up to the brand and how uh, tacky or stringy it is, but um, that'll be a future experiment. All right, so with that being said, I'm using a, this is Pro Art. I think Pro Art is um, Jerry's Artorama. It must have been a buy it, try it brush. And just kind of just really use them aggressively like I do with my uh, watercolor brushes. I know that wears them out and makes them all frazzled, but the, the textures work for me. And I've mentioned uh, Stuart Davies, and he uses uh, something as simple as a chip brush from the uh, hardware store. Dennis Sheehan, I'm not sure what type of brushes uh, he's using. Mr. Sheehan has a, a series of videos on um, online. I think it's uh, Sheehan Academy. And I think he does in-person demos. Unfortunately, I've never had the chance to go to one. I think he's up in um, Boston. And Mr. Davies is in France. Though, Mr. Davies has it set up where he does uh, Zoom meetings. I unfortunately haven't been part of one of those yet, but he also has um, people come out for about a week and I think stay up and um, he'll teach them in person. So if you check them out, if you have the funds to do things like that, look into it. Let me know if you wind up doing something like that. I can imagine it'd be very, very fun. And maybe down the line, that's something that I can um, wind up doing, you know, kind of setting things up where people come along and, and paint and have fun. That's what Mr. Ron Ranson had done. I think the whole um, Bob Ross, essentially like the whole Bob Ross business plan and I think it behind the man or the people behind it were people learning the method and going and teaching on location using the tools and materials. Yeah, Hammy. Okay. Yeah, bud. Yeah, I got work tomorrow. Tomorrow ends uh, the fall Thanksgiving break. Though, uh, this video will be up at a different date. I've been putting up um, time lapses on YouTube. 
of some of these and putting the full lengths up on uh, Patreon. I have so much free content on YouTube, I want to make sure that the people that are donating and uh, supporting through uh, Patreon are also getting you know their money's worth for the donations. Oh, hammy. I know you were going to do... Actually, I didn't know he was going to do that, but he did that at the beginning of the break. He jumped in. <laughs> he got a paw full of Van Dyke brown with watercolor. So anyway, I have been just playing with these water solubles, uh, looking at how far I can wipe them back, looking at the tonal values. I haven't really sat and looked at one that's dried completely yet. I hammy, watch out, bud. I'm sorry. Uh, what was I saying? Okay, so I haven't really sat back and looked at one that dried yet, because I'm anticipating some to be glossy and some to be matte. I think that's just, in general, going to be properties of oil paints um, on the pigment, probably the brand, binders, etc. But ultimately, using a varnish is going to you know, bring everything up to the same level. But I'm just curious about that. I'm also curious um, with potentially glazing over them. One of the main goals is to either use this for plain air painting, which I'm trying to save up for you know like a little plein air easel for oils. I've been looking at the um, gorilla pocket box the five by seven I think um, Joe has the six by eight but he's using watercolors and gouache I believe anyhow so just been looking at those different aspects of it eventually we'll visit glazing with it we'll visit hammy walking all over it I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna be a bummer going back to work and not be able to hang out with Hammy. As if you haven't noticed by now, Hammy is my, my best bud. All right, Hammy. And that is not an invitation to jump up here. I have um, Percy, the kitten. Well, she's like two years old now. And I absolutely love Percy. But sometimes, you know, she's more of a me time type of cat. But at night, she'll cuddle with me and sleep next to me. And in the mornings when I wake up, I have to play laser pointer with her. So, a variety of textures, even with just these cheap, simple brushes. I have to play catch up with uh, comments on YouTube. I'm sorry if I haven't gotten to any of y'all's. Somebody asked in a recent one if I could do a demo with acrylics. I always say that I don't paint in acrylics because I really have a hard time handling them. 
where watercolor works for me and I kind of have the dry tan down the wet and wet down and then oil works for me like with the, the handling but there's something about the acrylics that I just can't figure out but I do have some acrylics and maybe I could just try it out one day because one of the thing is one, one of the things is with this channel I mean it, it really is all about experimentation I mentioned in the previous video that the the closet in the art room door used to store uh, blankets for um, smaller pets um, and pet rats. And lately, Hammy's been going after that door, and that the, the rats, the pet rats, had passed away a few years ago. Their blankets are no longer in there, but I guess maybe. The sense is still there. Hmm. Seeing how I like scraping out. One of the things I was thinking about before starting this video that I'm gonna have to watch out for is I'm taping it down onto this surface. And this is the same Kind of wooden shape that I attach my watercolor paper to and I've gotten some oil around the edges and that'll dry that's some hammy hair and that'll dry but if I use watercolor paper on it before they dry and it gets into the paper I think the linseed oil itself can I don't know if it rots and degrades the paper I think that's why things have to be gessoed and primed whenever you oil it. I like the idea of building up a tree here. But I'm debating a separate foreground right in front. This is just rolling up the paper towel and using it to lift. I think some of these textures are gonna pull it closer in the picture plane. Which was fun. Let's let this develop. Yep, hammy. What's wrong, bud? I think I want to introduce the lamp black into this now. Put out a little bit more of the ultramarine so these are the ultramarine's lucas brand the lamp black is daniel smith the price point on all of them seem to be really good especially with like just small triads that i've been doing Okay, we're looking pretty good. I was just checking to see if we ever get in the glare or anything.
Now for me, it has been I don't know if it's so much an issue as um, a reoccurrence that I'm noticing is that I'm kind of wiping on relatively lightly, I think initially, you know, a little bit um, watered down, which is fine. But then I hit a point with the oil painting where I'm going straight from the tube and these are, I guess you would say buttery. That seems to be one of the common terms that people will use. They'll either say stiff, buttery, waxy. Um, but when I use regular oils, I originally had used uh, the Blick and the Winton, uh, the student grade ones. Then I had got upgraded to the uh, Williamsburg which I think are you know, stiffer and I'll you know, mix in my medium. So this is kind of softer. I'm, I'm definitely start applying more and it gets to the point where you start losing the texture from the brush. So I th think what I'm trying to say is that I'm overdoing it. But if I water these down, I'm going to start removing the, the under layers. I could, of course, come in and lift. And come back with it. And if I'm not mistaken, and not being like a, I'm not a professional with oil paints, but we could take a softer uh, brush at this stage, and that would let us lay the oils on top of the previous layer more. But I'll save that for another video. So I've watched uh, David LaFell, uh, oil painter, uh, still life and um, portraits. And he does bright light fine art is his, um, the name of his company. I think it's him, his wife, um, another lady. And they have, you know, painting videos and demonstrations where they'll go on location and do that. And... Uh, give seminars, but in all the, the videos, if I recall, I signed up for that one. That's about, I think it was about twenty dollars, twenty thirty dollars a month. And I signed up for a month or two, so I had books from him from college, and I really just enjoyed his process, and I like the way he teaches. I think I had uh, COVID at the time, so I was just kind of laying down a lot. And anyway, so watching him, he would use use the one brush. I don't think he would have a second brush. Maybe he would have a second brush. Um, in paper towel in most of the videos. Near the end, he would always wind up uh, turning to I think his wife and just say, "Hey, I only used one towel this video." Using the back of the handle a lot today. Just for little textures. I think a yellow ochre or a raw sienna would be really nice with this palette. I 
That'll be down the line. I have found that you can wet your paper towel and use it as an eraser with these. So if we wanted to go back in. We can do that. That brings things a little too bright. One thing I struggle with is textures in the skies and just letting loose and letting that texture flow. Looking for kind of lost and found edges. Just pulling things together. I think I do want to in introduce a little bit of raw sienna. No, yellow wicker, that's what I have out, so I'll just use that. So we have that same color in the background, putting in larger applications here. I wonder if I went overboard with that. I think with oils, it's a lot easier to do your painting. 
then come back at a later point, a later time, and look at it and say, you know, I need to adjust this here, or change this here. With watercolors, I just, um, I can't do that. I like getting them done in one session. And one thing with the scraping is it'll pull back to the white, but with um, watercolor, whenever we scrape, if it's wet and wet, we can pull back to the, um, we can actually make that dark impression. So I have to come up with a way to put the thin dark lines down for the illusion of tree uh, trunks, but, or branches. I've never figured out how, I think it's just a matter of patience and effort, but how some masters that went and almost seemed to do every single branch. Here's the palette knife, just See if we can pull up an edge to, to lay down. It doesn't seem to be working. And these pans are just not quite wide enough for me to get on the edge of the knife. So, on that note, there we go, you let it glide, not really, it's been so long since I've really painted with a palette knife, that was a lot of college where you'd be mixing and playing around. I'll leave it at that, I think I do like the application of the um, the yellow ochre could add a lot of life to it and get a lot going on with that. But on that note, I'm going to... Ham, you got to go off my chair, bud. So I can sit down. I'm going to scratch my name right here. I should just start scratching AB. I had mentioned fine lines earlier for... For painting I, I don't know how people sign their name with a brush <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed um, I'm not sure if this is a patreon exclusive or up on uh, YouTube but I'll figure that out I hope you enjoyed uh, please like subscribe follow if you follow along I'd love to see what y'all do feel free to shoot me a message or tag me on social media on that note have a great day y'all take care